John Borland Thayer II was born in Philadelphia in 1862. He was an avid sportsman when he was young and began playing cricket in his early years. He attended the University of Pennsylvania, where he was captain of the lacrosse team and also played baseball for the school. When he left the university in 1881, he took a position with the Pennsylvania Railroads. Thus began his successful railroad career. In 1892, he married Marion Morris, the daughter of a prominent Philadelphia family. The couple would eventually have four children, two daughters and two sons, the most well-known being their eldest son, John Thayer III, or Jack, as he was called. As the couple began to grow their family, Thayer was elected as the fifth vice president of the railroad in 1903. This began a succession of promotions until March of 1911, when he was serving the Pennsylvania Railroad as its second vice president and managing director. In the spring of 1912, Thayer, his wife Marion, and 17-year-old son Jack had been invited guests of the American Consul General in Berlin. Jack had also just graduated from school in England and was ready to return to the United States. On April 10th, the three boarded the newest White Star luxury liner, the RMS Titanic, in Cherbourg, France, for the journey back home. On Sunday evening, April 14th, the Thayers, along with fellow friends George Widener, Major Archibald Butt, and William Carter, held a lavish dinner party in honor of Captain Edward Smith, the captain of the Titanic, in the a la carte restaurant on board. Eventually, the Thayers retired to their cabins in first class and prepared to go to bed. It was at approximately 11.40 p.m. when the ship struck the iceberg which lay in its path. Young Jack and his father ventured up onto the deck, but could not see anything other than some scattered ice in the well deck forward. As they came inside, they ran into Thomas Andrews, the designer of the Titanic. He told the Thayers that they had scraped against an iceberg and that the ship had probably an hour or so to live. Upon hearing that, the call went out for all passengers to get dressed and to put on the life jackets. The Thayers did so quickly and then returned to the A-deck to follow any instructions. Eventually, young Jack got separated from his parents near the grand staircase and Marion Thayer and her maid found themselves loaded onto lifeboat number four, which lowered into the sea at 1.50 a.m. Standing at the railing were fellow husbands John Thayer, George Widener, Arthur Ryerson, and John Jacob Astor. It was the last time that they would ever see their wives. As the ship began its final plunge, Colonel Archibald Gracie, a fellow survivor, saw John Thayer, as well as John Jacob Astor and George Widener, standing by the railing engaged in conversation. Colonel Gracie said that Thayer looked pale and determined. Time had run out. The Titanic slipped beneath the waves. John Thayer and the others went down with the ship. His body was never found. He was just one week shy of his 50th birthday. Meanwhile, young Jack had found his friend Milton Long, and together they ended up plunging into the sea. Unfortunately, Milton Long perished in the icy waters. Jack managed to regain composure in the freezing water and miraculously swam to the overturned lifeboat B, which was nearby. He was eventually rescued by the Carpathia in the morning, where he was reunited with his mother. He had to tell her that he had become separated from his father, and it was then known that John Thayer had not been rescued. Young Jack went on with his life and attended the University of Pennsylvania like his father. He eventually was appointed treasurer of the school in 1939. He had married and had six children after the disaster. In 1940, he wrote an eyewitness account of his ordeal on the Titanic that was eventually published. However, one of his sons was killed in the South Pacific while serving in World War II in 1944. It seems that Jack never really recovered from this event. In September of 1945, just as the war ended, Jack Thayer was found in his car with slashed wrists and throat. He had apparently committed suicide. He was 50 years old, just about the same age as his father, when he was lost on the Titanic 33 years before. Thanks for watching Profiles from the Titanic.